stack is a first in last out data structure. What that means is, if we insert element A and element B in stack in that order, order of removal will be B and then A. We will see more about insertion and removal in upcoming slides. The removal operation is called pop, while the insertion operation is called push. You cannot do selective removal of an element of your choice from the stack. Selective removal is possible in data structures like array and linked list. In array or linked list, you can remove or insert an element at an index x. But that's not possible in a stack. Elements are popped out of stack in reverse order. In forthcoming slides we will see what that means. Let us see the operations which are possible on the stack data structure. Primarily, there are two operations on a stack. Pushing an element. Pushing an element will insert the new element as the last element. And popping an element. Popping an element results in popping the last inserted element. The question arises then, what if there are no elements left in the stack? Well, in that case an error condition will be returned. Stack may or may not have an upper boundary on it. If it has an upper boundary then there is a limit on the number of elements that can be pushed into it. Else any number of elements can be inserted into it. Third operation is size. It will tell you the number of elements in the stack at any point of time. Fourth operation is called is empty. It will tell you if stack is currently empty or not. Empty means there are no elements in the stack at that instance. Fifth operation is called top. It will return you the topmost element of the stack. This operation is equivalent to a pop followed by a push. In subsequent slides we will see the use of all these operations. Now, we will see how push, pop and various other operation works on a stack. Before going any further, we need to use a data structure to implement stack. By implementation we mean a backing data structure, which will store the elements of the stack. The easiest way to implement stack would be to use an array. While doing push, we will store an element in the array, and, while doing pop, we will delete the topmost element from it. The current position where a new element has to be pushed can be determined by a pointer. This pointer is called stack pointer. In our example, stack is implemented with an array of size 5. Initially, our stack is empty. Hence stack pointer, which is denoted using SP, is pointing to the beginning of the array. Size should of course return 0. Since stack doesn't have any element in it, is empty should return true. Since stack is empty, top will return minus 1 or null as stack pointer is pointing to the beginning of the array. An operation push is performed with element 5. Size will return 1 now. Is empty will return 0, as stack is no more empty. And top will return 5, as 5 is the topmost element of the stack. An operation push is then performed with element 6. You will notice how SP is pointing to a different location on the stack now. When a pop is performed, it always happens on the current position of SP. You can see multiple push and pop operations. This is the current picture of the stack. A push is performed with element 4. You can see how stack changes and SP now points to one level above the current level. A pop is performed. It will remove the topmost element and point SP one level below the current level. You can see the values operation size is empty and top will return. Then a push of 9 is performed. 
you can see how stack has grown from the last position and SP is now pointing to location 1 level above the current location. Now, since we have understood the concept of stack and various operations on it, let us see how we can implement a stack. The simplest way to implement a stack is to use an array. In our example we have used an array of size 5. You can see initially SP is pointing to the start of the stack. So, SP may be initialized to either null or minus 1. A push is done with 5. So, 5 is stored in the stack and SP is incremented. Multiple push operations are performed and stack has changed from its initial layout. A push of 2 is performed, and stack pointer is incremented, to point to the end of the array. At this point array is full and we are trying to push element 11. This situation is critical, at this point there is no way we can insert one more element in the array. If we try it will lead to stack overflow, as we will be copying the new element outside the boundary of the stack. We will see in the pseudo code, how to deal with such situations. Operation push, has to return an error condition, whenever stack has reached the limit. What are options then, if we want to push more elements in the stack? In this particular case we have increased the size of the backing array. In programming languages like C and C++ we can use library function, relock. It will increase the size of the array. However, the drawback of this approach is it's time consuming to allocate space for new array, and then copy all the elements from the old one to the new one. But for, array that is the only option possible. So, whenever push detects stack overflow condition, it will increase the size of the array. In our example size of the array has been doubled, then old array is copied to the new array and then actual store of element 11 is done and stack pointer incremented accordingly. We have seen how to implement a stack using an array. We also saw the limitation of array implementation of stack. Array has limited size, and incrementing it dynamically is time consuming. Moreover, if array is not populated up to the optimal limits, there is a wastage of space. Instead of using array as backing data structure one can use linked list. Primary benefit of linked list is there is no wastage of space. The number of nodes are same, as the number of elements in the stack. Another benefit is there is no upper limit on the number of elements, which exists in case of array. Hence, no, relock operations are required. So, lot of time is saved on resizing. However, the disadvantage is the cost of node creation. In array pushing an element is easy, we just need to store element at the stack pointer. While in case of link list, as we will see, pushing means creating a new node and then storing element there. Popping also takes little more than decrementing the stack pointer. We need to adjust the stack pointer and free the topmost node. Now, Let's take a look at how stack can be implemented using the link list. Initially, link list is empty so SP points to null. An operation push is performed with 5. A node is created with 5. The next pointer of this node will point to SP, while SP will be changed to point to this new node. This way we are making sure SP is always the topmost node, and any subsequent push or pop can be easily done, as SP can be located. Program will always keep track of SP. Program will also keep track of the size of the stack, at each push it will increase the size by 1. And at each pop operation it will reduce it. Operation size will just return the value of that variable. Operation top is easy. It will just return the element store at SP. This way we can avoid tracking the entire link list while calculating the size. 
Then an operation push with element 6 is performed. It will again create a node, and point its next pointer to the SP. And SP will be pointed to this node. A push is performed with element 4. You can see how new node points to the SP, and SP is changed to point to the new node. Then a pop is performed. It should pop out the topmost element pointed to by SP. SP will point to the next pointer of SP, and topmost node, which was previously pointed to by SP, will be deleted. Finally a push is performed with element 9.